Welcome to the Misfit One Lifestyles with Elizabeth Colon. She will awaken and connect with your Misfit One. Are you tired of the ups and downs in your life? Are you ready to live a healthy lifestyle once and for all? We are talking about all aspects of your life. Being fit is not just physical. It's also your mind and soul. Learn how to take steps in your life to move towards your goals. Elizabeth's goal is for everyone listening to the sound of her voice to get fit. Let's get focused, let's get intentional, and let's transform. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Colon. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Miss Fit One Lifestyles with your girl, Elizabeth Colon, also known as Miss Fit One. Listen guys, today's guest is going to give us the tea on the beauty, baby. We're going to talk about makeup and a very serious disease that we all need to be made aware of. It's the one and only beautiful Christina Black. How are you doing, girl? Hi, how are you, my love? So good to see you. It is so good to see you. Let me tell you, I am so eager to be speaking with you today. Oh um, my gosh, how nice are you? I I am nice. I, I am nice. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep repeating that over and over. You are. I am nice. You are nice. <laughs> yes. Christina, for those of you who do not know, which I'm pretty sure you do, but she is the CEO of Pretty Girl Makeup. Let's talk about that part of you first, because you wear several hats, right? I do. I wear a lot of hats. I am a celebrity makeup artist, and I am a CEO, and I'm a mom, and a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, well, let's talk about it. Let's break it down, because this is all about- Ask away. Yes, yes, yes. So listen, as a celebrity makeup artist, that is- sounds so cool and terrifying all at once for me. <laughs> it can be a time. It's actually really a great job. I I'm uh, I think at the beginning when I started doing it and uh, it was a little intimidating, but I'm very comfortable in my skin and I'm very confident in what I do. So it's um, now I just enjoy it. I get to travel to cool places and meet really interesting people and work on great projects with interesting teams and I love it. It's really such a blessing. It's to get people in my chair, like Honda Lisa Rice, uh, Lars Ulrich from Metallica, Hillary Swank, you know, go to Gucci or Louis Vuitton. It is a dream come true. And, uh, you know, I, I love it so much. How I'm did very get, grateful. How, how did you get into being a celebrity makeup artist? Well, I was first a makeup artist <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I love the celebrity part came a little while after it, you know, I had to get some celebrities in my uh, portfolio before I could add that title to my resume, but I was very blessed. I started working on friends and family. I worked on my mom. She was probably my first person. Uh, she had, she was diagnosed with stage four brain cancer and she was going out with my dad one night. And so I said, oh, mom, I'm going to do your makeup, even though I had no idea what I was doing and she didn't have a lot of products, but I managed to make her look like the best version of her. And what really, I love that, but I also love that it made her feel like her old self and it really changed just her whole demeanor. And so, and I still love that to this day, making someone look like they've never looked before and um, then I started working with different photographers and doing weddings. And, and then I got a, a portfolio together and submitted it to different agents. And I was signed with Ford in New York. And um, I was with them for a while. And then I got some different agents. And now I'm with Zenobia. And I, I love it. It's super fun. So when I'm not being a CEO, I'm being a makeup artist. Well, I love that. I love the story about your mom. Was that the moment that you like, oh, yeah, this is what I love? When you saw just what you said, was this the moment that you said, like, I'm going for this? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a makeup artist. I don't think I did at that point. I just thought it made her look good. But later years passed when I started doing it more. I remember those were just memories that I had of like, how did it start and where did it start? And what do I love about my job? And it's 
something about, I love people. I love to travel, but I like making people feel good besides look good. And so it's a perfect fit for me of uh, making people feel comfortable before they get on set. Uh, sometimes I start with aromatherapy and, and doing a hand massage to just kind of get if they have a headache or they're tired. And I, so part of my job is to make obviously the client look like the best version of themselves, but to feel like the best version of themselves because the camera does not lie. And if you are not in a good mood or you're tired, it shows. So it is a big factor um, in my job of, of making people look and feel good. Yeah, that's so true because um, <laughs> the camera picks up everything. Ever. And, and now they have the audacity to have HD. Excuse me. Oh, I know. Like, hello, 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 hello. Are you in front of the camera or are you behind the camera when you come up with this HD? And it's so scary. But the makeup part of it, like you said, is is a important part. But you are 100% correct as how you feel. I have been in a chair and they turn me around and I'm like, and I want to cry. Right. I want to cry because I don't ever see myself so made up. And then they do it way like I don't look like a version of myself. Right. Right. I like how you said the best version of yourself. And yes, that's very key. It's important. It's, it's important because you don't want, you know, a lot of people that I work with have been doing it forever and they're professional and they're fine. But you know, when it's someone that's new to the business and have and haven't been in front of the camera a lot, it can be very distracting for them to not feel comfortable with how they're looking. So they're not able to focus on what they need to focus on in front of the camera. They're they're feeling weird about how they look. And so then that's a problem. So it's super important to listen to your clients on how they feel. And you know, sometimes. I've had clients that don't, I don't particularly agree with how they like to do their makeup, but that's how they feel the most comfortable. So I have to let it, you know, I, I, I suggest things like, you know, it might look better for the camera if we do this, but if they're really adamant, then I just let it be. Then you just let them look crazy on the camera. Go ahead. Well, I, oh. I just, I'm like, you know don't what? If that's crazy. how you want to look, <laughs> don't look crazy. Don't, don't I can't say, but I can't even say. <laughs> oh, I have said that too. I've had a few times I've said to people, do not say <laughs> that I had anything to do with your face. <laughs> Christina, no. No. I swear. no. Oh, yeah. No, there's been some a couple of times where people want to do something like, you know, with their lipstick or I don't know what color they want. And I'm just like, I was nowhere near you. I don't even know you. <laughs> Get my number, baby. Forget my yeah. number. It's so funny. And and so your love of beauty is I, I equate that to like wellness, right? Wellness is not only what we put in our mouth or what how we work out it's our um, environment right it's the what we hear what we what we see what we it's everything see, everything and i love how your love of beauty is tied into all that fashion and music and arts and you challenge you know you channel all of that and i yeah yeah I, all of those things, I think I'm very visual. And so, you know, my house is super, everything's kind of like there, every, there's a lot of white flowers. It's very tranquil and, you know, it's always very clean because I don't like it. I'm home. If I'm working, I'm not on set. So I just don't like a mess. It makes me uncomfortable and I, it's distracting. So I think you know, I start my day off with, you know, water with vinegar or, or lemon juice, supplements, green juice, tea. So beauty for the, for me is from the inside out. It starts with what you're putting in because your skin again, doesn't lie. And it's really important to eat well and have a lot of vegetables in your diet, drink a lot of water, stay out of the sun. And so I, I do feel like I can see the difference in people. Like I can tell you eat well. Oh, do tell. How can you tell? I can tell. Well, your skin's glowing. I mean, you, oh. you just, 
You look fantastic. And, but you know, it's so interesting. There's people that I can tell that, you know, are eating a lot of meat. They're not getting enough sleep. That's another huge thing. Americans as a whole uh, pride themselves on not sleeping enough. And it is, it's not a joke, beauty sleep. It's, that is a real fact. Fact, girlfriend, beauty sleep. Because listen, it, and we listen to some, I'm asleep when I'm dead. I'm a grind, I'm a grind, I'm a grind. Well, you go right ahead. I just turned 50 years old and I am not going to be grind until I'm dead. <laughs> like, no, thank you. No. I, need, I need some sleep. And it takes seven hours, at least seven hours. At least. Your cells to rejuvenate and replenish from the day's work. You work 24 hours. Give it seven hours to recharge. How about that? Absolutely. It's important to exercise. And I am a firm believer in getting going to bed sometimes at eight o'clock, go read a book and just, or turn on a meditation app and just rest your body. You know, it's so important that we listen to our bodies and it's not from a beauty perspective. It's from a health and wellness perspective that you are going to have a, a better life. If you exercise, you just are. And yeah. if you eat well and don't drink a lot and you get a lot of sleep, you will have you know, a much better existence on and this it, planet. And it helps you as the, the makeup artist work on our face because, you know, if you have a healthier skin, I people ask me all the time. I think that's the number one question I get is about my skin, right? And I don't do anything. And my daughter, my youngest daughter, who's 22, um, she, she'll be 23 this year. And she goes, the next time somebody asks you about your skin, I'm going to say, she doesn't wash her face every day. She doesn't. And I said, oh my God, it's so funny. I do wash my face every day, but I don't do like when people ask, I don't have a regimen. I, I wash my face like, and, and I put sunscreen moisturizer on and roll out. Like that's it, you know? And but that's really important because sun damage is the number one factor in aging and I can hide a lot of imperfections. I can't hide someone's age. I can't hide, you know, I, here's an, an example. I was on a shoot one time and there was a model that showed up and she broke out in the worst acne. And I was so irritated with her because your job is to come here with good skin. My job is to make you look fantastic. I can only hide, like I can't hide a, whole, you know, a rash of acne. So I told her, I'm like, listen, it was a Friday. We had this shoot and then we were going to shoot again Monday, Tuesday. I said, look, you have two days. I want you to do uh, celery juice, Saturday, Sunday, drink a lot of water, get to sleep, take a probiotic. And it was remarkable, the change in how her skin looked from Friday to Monday with the celery juice. It's anti-inflammatory. It clears the skin. And it, and she, and she had needed sleep. And so all of those things, it was amazing in two days, her skin looked like a different person. Yeah. And, and it is important. And like you said, water is so important. Oh my gosh. So people are, it's so funny. My kids get so sick of hearing me speaking about dehydration. I think the world, all the world's problems are because of dehydration. I'm like, oh, you have a headache, you're dehydrated. Oh, you're tired. You're dehydrated. It's like, my kids are like, mom, do you have another line? I'm like, nope. Cause that's the one. I promise you, Christy, I did that too. My friends, this, so if they talk to me like, I don't know, I've been just so tired. Lethargic. And like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you, you're are you dehydrated. Up water? Are you not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to start saying it now. You're dehydrated. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm like, don't come to me with a headache. Don't come to me with your lazy, your lazy ass. Go Drink some water and go hike. I give you. <laughs> you are so funny, but you are speaking the truth. That is facts, guys. Facts. It's true. Oh. If you want to look good, you have to drink water. I mean, it's not. It's so funny. People think like, "Oh, what's the miracle makeup?" To for, it's like uh, eating well, mm -hmm. exercise, being mm -hmm. happy, being loved. You know what? When you are feeling loved and you are happy, you're going to glow. And I can't wave my wand on you and uh, right. give um, you that. 
I'm going to drop. I can do a lot with my fairy wand, but. Uh, you don't you know, have a pixie dust of love. Yeah. So but if you're, if you're angry and bitter and not oh. grateful, it shows. And you know what? No one wants to be around that. No, no, no one wants to be around that at all. I love that you as a makeup artist gets it. You said it earlier. It comes from the inside out and same with absolutely people don't get that. Like that it's inside out. So listen, tell us about your company, Miss CEO. Talk to us about. Oh uh, God. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll put that hat on. <laughs> Yeah. Now let's switch. We're going to switch your head one more time, maybe two, but let's talk. Yeah. talk okay. So yes, I am the creator and CEO of Pretty Girl Makeup. I started the company in a long, long time ago in uh, 1999. And uh, so I have had my company a long time. I formulated it with uh, a beauty chemist and I started, I'm self-funded and I just Tell started my line. Yeah. What is, I'm sorry. Line? What is your line? So my line is I, I formulated, I've had all different products through the years, but right now we're just focused on lips. I am getting invest. My partner, Jordan Hall and I are, um, are getting investors and we are going to be expanding into skincare, hair care, and expanding the makeup line. And we're going to start a new company called I'm too busy. I'm so we are very excited. I'm too busy. I love that. Okay. And so let's talk about lips now. See, I, you just threw me something else and I have to ask yes. what, what kind like lip gloss, lip care, lip what? Lip gloss, lip gloss. So my lip gloss is very long lasting. It's anti-aging. It's hydrating. Um, it's, I love my products. They all have funny names. There's soulmates, love of my life, love of all loves, uh, Hey Where lover. Can we get it from? Where can we get them? Well, you can go to prettygirlmakeup.com and we are offering Jordan and I are offering a 25% discount with a 25% off with discount code pretty girl. So if they go to prettygirlmakeup.com, they can, uh, order some lip gloss. I'm going to go to pretty, I am a lips, lip gloss. Poor. I'm just going to say I was just going to say that. I say uh, that uh, word all the time. I'm, I really yes. am. Lip gloss whore. Yeah. Aren't I we all? really am. We're and all whores. <laughs> yeah. I got so many lip gloss and everything. Not anything. If I put makeup on, I don't have, I don't have eyeliner. I don't have anything, nothing in my purse other than lip liner and lip gloss. Cause that That's will make so funny. the whole day better. I don't care how bad the day is. You better put some liner on and some lip gloss and you'll I agree. <laughs> you put your sunglasses on and you look like you're a, you know, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> you don't ask me no questions because yes. that lip gloss is popping. I love it. Yeah, so we're definitely get some. I'm definitely going to get some for sure. Now you got pretty girl makeup going on and you are are the celebrity makeup artist, but one of the things that was really endearing to me is um the story of your husband and and the grief that you suffered behind uh, this horrible disease. And um, I want everybody to know about it because I think it is something that um, not a lot of people know. And we're talking about, um, I keep saying it wrong, but it's- Sepsis. Sepsis, sepsis. sepsis. yes, yes. Sepsis. Yeah, sepsis yes. awareness. Um, yes. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Because, and, and your of husband, course. you know, um, you were married to the former, I'm trying to, Ken, Ken Flack. Ken Flack, yes. He was the former number one doubles tennis player with his partner, Rob Seguso. Yes. yes. And he passed in 2018 of this? Yes, he did. Okay. I, I'm so sorry for your loss. That had to be such a devastating um, time in your life. Um, and I don't want to put words in your into mm -hmm. your mouth, but please talk to us about this and kind of help us understand, give it, give us more knowledge on this. So my husband got a cold, uh, and it turned from bronchitis into pneumonia. We had contacted our doctors at Kaiser Permanente in California, and they did not see him. They diagnosed him over the phone, um, and they misdiagnosed him. And so 
they did not give him an antibiotic, even though we said repeatedly that he had, you know, stuff in his chest and his throat and he had chest pain and everything. But within 16 hours, uh, he was on life support because they gave him, he had an infection in his body and that's how sepsis grows. If you have uh, an infection in your body and you are given cough medicine with codeine and no antibiotic, it is like a wildfire that grows. And so it slows down your breathing, the infection grows, and that's how, so it's, uh, sepsis is an infection of the blood, a blood that attacks all your vital organs. And so if your listeners want to go to sepsis.org, scroll down, there's a little diagram that says time. And what time is, is T is for temperature. Uh, you can be either hot or cold. I is for infection in some place in your body, whether it be a cut or an infected tooth or bronchitis or pneumonia. Uh, M is for mental decline. It starts getting hard for them to rouse them and they're a little confused. And E is for excruciating pain. It's attacking your vital organs. You feel like you're dying because you are dying. Wow. Uh, so to give you an example, Ken, oh, we called the doctor Wednesday, Thursday, he was on life support. By Monday, his arms and legs turned black. All his organs had shut down and we had to take him off life support. So because of who he was, we had a, um, the sepsis Alliance contacted me and asked if I'd be willing to raise awareness for sepsis, um, and to honor Ken. And I thought that would be a great I idea to, you know, help other people not go through the loss that, that my family has. So I have been doing that since, uh, 2018 and speaking about grieving in a positive way. And it, because a lot of times people at the beginning stages of grief, people really or don't know they're in such shock and they don't know what to do. And I just remember I had lost my son, Bo. Uh, it'll be 16 years this December on Christmas day. So I, by the time, and that was so devastating. So by the time, you know, Ken passed, I kind of knew I couldn't go down that dark rabbit hole. I, I knew that I had to really be more disciplined than I already am. I, I realized that when I got either too tired, too hungry, didn't exercise, everything just seemed worse than it was. I mean, even though it was bad. So it was really important that I ate well, drank well, rested, did meditation, prayed, got outside and hiked or went to yoga, did, did something. You're just trying to find your normal because, but your, no, your old normal doesn't exist. So you have to create a new normal and it's, it, you will find it. It does take time. I thought that getting back to work immediately was going to uh, make me feel normal again. But once I, you know, seven days, my agent booked me something. So, you know, I asked her to, I said, please just get me on a set. Cause I know I'll be, I'll, I'll feel normal again. I was convinced of it, but I wasn't, I was so not ready, but it just, it took time. And I had to be kind to myself. I was very hard on myself. And then my daughter, Melania came home from London and, she saw how I was and she said, you know, mom, you have to be grateful for the time you had with Ken that we all had with Ken, because after Bo died, you were so sad and he made you laugh again and smile and made all of us happy. And so after she said that, it really put things in perspective for me because it's true. You know, I, I, I really was grateful to have those eight years with him and all my family was very grateful that we had him. He was such a character and so funny and sweet and he was amazing and so it really did help uh you know doing these podcasts and different interviews raising awareness um and hearing from other people telling me that you know because of something they heard of me they didn't lose their loved one so that feels really great and so but you know i i was on a hike by myself one day and i i could hear ken saying to me I can't stand watching you cry from up here down there when I can't comfort you the same. And I just thought, wow, how would I feel if I was looking down on him or my kids or my friends mm -hmm. and I couldn't comfort them. And so we're not honoring our loved one by being miserable and not being happy and, and productive and being our best self. So it really, once that happened, I really thought I need to do things that to be positive and happy and work hard and, you know, be the best friend I can be and mom and 
right. and everything and, and, and figure and honor him and then figure out what my new normal was. I had to figure out how to be alone. My kids had gone off to college, except my little one. And that was weird again. Right. And then, yeah, yeah it's just, it just was going to take time to find my new normal and I have my new normal and I'm, I am happy. I, I have a new love and I have this person in my life. That's amazing. And I love him to pieces. And I, I feel like Ken sent him because they're so similar. It's crazy. Mm. And um, Ken's spirit animal was a, a an eagle. And this person has, Ken had a tattoo on his shoulder. And my, my purse, I don't say my person's name. He does very private. So I don't say his name, but he has a tattoo of an eagle on the same shoulder that Ken had his. And they have the same amount of children in the same order, the same age. I mean, it's just so many interesting coincidences, which I don't believe in coincidences. And I know you don't either. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It's like, no, I don't know. If that's a cool. No, that's like, it's not even possible. So I am so grateful that I have this new person to love and that loves me. And it's such a blessing. And because it makes, it doesn't mean it's kind of like, someone said to me, well, how can you love someone else? And I just said, well, it's kind of like when you have kids, I have five children to say that. And I have, I have a heart for each child. Right. And that I love with all of that heart and my new person, I have this brand new heart that's just for him. And I, it is big and full and full of so much love. And I'm so grateful. What? You know, I'm really grateful to find someone that makes me laugh and teases me and, and it loves me. I'm just, and I'm very grateful. That's what life is about, right? Is it's for living and loving and laughing. Like that's like the three L's Absolutely. That I want to live. Living, by. love, exactly. I agree. And I think I'm, you know, I'm happy. I know I look, you know, it's so we were talking about. I know that I have a definite glow to me. I look better. I feel better. And you are stunning. And, and oh, you're too kind. <laughs> no, seriously. When we get on the air, you took my breath away. I was like, oh, my gosh, you're gorgeous. Oh, you're too nice. You know, can you give us, you know, maybe two or three things that if somebody is dealing with grief, how can they move forward? Can you give them a little tip on? Yeah, I think this just starting out, just being, try not to get too tired, too hungry, too thirsty to get, make sure you get exercise. Think of things you're grateful for. You know, God gives us these people in our lives to love. And it doesn't mean we're entitled to a lifetime. It means you're entitled to whatever it was that you got. And if you think of it from that perspective of just being grateful for what the time you had and not for what you don't have life's a lot easier. And I think it's so important to, you know, help other people when you're feeling yucky. I know when I was not feeling great, it did help me to do my charity work, I raise money for my foundations and work on this garden for my son, Bo. It, it, you know, because there is always someone worse off than you or me, right? Mm -hmm. That, yeah. There are so many people that have worse things. And I, you know, I was on this show once and this woman was saying, uh, talking about me and introducing me. And then she said that I had the most tragic life. And I was like, bitch. <laughs> you know, it's like, let, excuse me while I'm I get like, my knife. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, whoa. I, I just was like, wow. First of all, thank you for having me on your show, but my life is not tragic. I've had tragedies, but my life is not tragic. Mm -hmm. And I, I just thought, wow, it's so interesting how someone can look like one person can look at my life as tragic. And then someone else like you looks at my life and you're like, okay, you've got this amazing career. You've got these yes. great kids. You've got all these <laughs> blessings. Like, yes, there are, but that's life. There are bumps and tragedies in life, yes, but you know what? There's also, a, I've had a million, millions of miracles and blessings and love and light in my life. And I focus on that because I, you know, I just look at my career, what's happened to me in the last five years of my career. I, I can't even believe it. I would never have thought my career would have taken off more than what it had already done. And so I'm very grateful for everything. 
I love that. And I love the perspective that you are putting out there because you are so, so enlightening in this fact, because when you usually talk to somebody about grief, they still so sad or bitter or, or, you know, just so distraught, you know, happiness to me is a choice. You know, you can wake up every morning, right? You can wake up and go, I'm going to have a great day, or I'm going to have a really messed up day. I wake up every morning. I did this book. I did a book cover with this woman and she had written this book about like self-help and stuff. But she said every morning, wake up, say, hello. You say your name, say, I love you. And we're going to have a great day. And every day I do, I wake up and I go, good morning, Christina. I love you. We're going to have a great day. I at least start. I mean, and it doesn't mean there's not going to be some mishap or some craziness that goes on, but I at least start with it being good. And then I think of all the things I'm grateful for, especially sometimes there's days when I'm like, okay, how many things can go wrong or messed up? I've got things to be grateful for. And that's what I need to focus on. And at the end of the day, I think of, I try, if another advice I would give would be to be kind, to treat yourself the way you treat others, because Mm -hmm. we are, I think most people are so generous and kind but yet we are so hard on ourselves. Oh my God, I didn't get enough done. I'm fat. I'm ugly. I'm, I'm tired. I'm, uh, uh, all this stuff. I am. think of all the things that you're grateful for and, and the good things in life. Focus on that because you know what? It's contagious. Love and light is contagious. No one wants to be around anybody that is just negative and grumpy and you know, Not looking at the person. world with deem and gloom. Yeah, that person doesn't they, want they to don't even want to be with themselves. No! <laughs> oh my God, it's true. And like, they don't want to be with them. So why would oh, anyone else want to be with them? Adios, amigo. Adios, amigo. Yeah. And you must totally listen to my podcast because one of my standard questions is how do you uh, care for yourself? And how do you start your day? And I love how you already answered that, how you started your day. So what does your self-care looks like? I exercise every day, whether it be yoga, Pilates, or a hike. I, you know, I wake up and I really try to be, it's really helped not to have a lot of sugar in my diet, drinking a lot of water, eating healthy, getting Mm. rest, laughing taking some time to read, learning new things, being open to new things, um, seeing people I love. And I, I don't know. I think life's great. I'm very happy. I love my new normal. I, and, and, and it's taken me four and a half years to be able to say that my new normal, because the normal that I knew doesn't exist anymore. And I just look back at my old normal and that was great. And I loved it, but I love my new normal. Oh. I really do. I'm really, I've really found happiness and joy and peace and love. And I am really, really grateful. I truly. Am like- and let me tell you, it wasn't that easy. It right. was like, there's this Whitney Houston song. I don't know if you know it. I Thanks. didn't know my own strength. Do you know that one? Oh my God. Yes. Right. Okay. So I heard that song one day and I'm like, I didn't know how brave and tough and strong I was but you you can't know until you are challenged or you have obstacles or these things that that happen in your life you don't know because how could you know when everything's perfect right you don't grow you know what I I I was on this show once and they it was these two psychologists and they were in LA and they were saying you know a lot of times you have post-traumatic shock from a bad experience however she said you um, have had post-traumatic growth. And I think that's a re- like, that to me was a really cool thing to hear. I hadn't thought of it from that perspective, but mm. I have grown so much. I have gotten so much more confident in myself. I could never, before Ken died, I was a makeup artist, very happy behind the camera. Right. I didn't like, I, you know, he was famous and that was great. And I was like doing my thing here, but now after doing thousands of these interviews, I am really comfortable having a conversation with you and talking about my, you know, feelings or, or, you know, different experiences that I have to help and inspire other people. And it's, I'm very grateful that I've been given that opportunity. That's been one of the blessings uh, for sure that I've been able to, um, 
share my story with people that they want to hear or that it helps someone that maybe is in a funk and can't take one, just take one step forward, do the first little thing and don't be so hard on yourself. And every day, just try and do a little bit more, a little bit more, make a a schedule for yourself if it's hard, you know, and it takes a little, totally. And it takes a little bit of discipline. I make green juice at night. I have it in the refrigerator that when I wake up, I have some midday, I fill up water bottles. I mean, I'm just super disciplined, but it's worth it because I feel like my energy level's good. I feel good. I look good. And yes, you do. Hopefully girl. I have good health. You know, I want to have a good, healthy life. You know, you are such a great example of our new normal and what we have to look forward to in our life. We all have peaks and valleys, you know, is that's just life peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. And I love how you say post-traumatic growth. That is what we all need. We all go through traumatic um, systems or or issues or things that happen in our life. All of us. It's whether we stay there or grow there, grow. And so here we are, we grow and, and you just shine and radiate. And I know everybody who is listening has a smile on their Aww, right thank now, you. like I do. But before we wrap it up, how can they stay connected with you? Well, you can go to christinaflack.com to see my portfolio, uh, prettygirlmakeup.com to see our makeup products. We're on Instagram, P-R-E-T-T-Y-G-I-R-L-M-K-U-P and Christina Flack Makeup. Uh, We're on Facebook, Twitter, and I wish everyone love and light. I was just going to say, is it anything else? You want to tell the people before we wrap it up, anything else you want to leave them with? I love that. <laughs> any, any other thing you want to just drop on them? Love and Try, love. you know, be your best self. Do, you know, push yourself a little bit. Do I, my biggest frustration is hearing people complain about their job, their living situation, their relationship, make a change, do something, stop complaining. No one wants to hear it. It's like chewy. I I heard this great quote on a meditation app. It was, uh, or it was on the daily J on calm. And he was saying that people complaining about the same thing over and over again is like basically chewing the same piece of meat over and over again. It's pretty gross. But if you think about it, like, why are you complaining and doing nothing to change? Right. You can, you can make any change you want. I mean, and it doesn't matter how old you are. Age is not, like, it, it's irrelevant. Not, it doesn't. And it was so great about it. This platform, my platform is all about living fit, focus, intentional and transforming. And honey, you are the perfect example of all of that. Thank oh, you. you're such Thank a love. Thank you for uh-huh. having such a cool show. Uh, thanks for coming on. You are really- Oh, my cool. pleasure. Anytime. Awesome. All right, you guys, till next week live fit. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Miss Fit One Lifestyles. Listen, when you are fed up and sick and tired of living this stifled, overwhelmed, and overstressed life, and you're ready to live the fullest, richest, and healthiest life by gaining more confidence, more energy, and more clarity, living in your best self you know what to do right go ahead go to my website misfitone.com sign up for our online courses creating healthy habit so that you too can live fit focus move with intention and transform your life